Hi, you join me right now on the ferry to Gazo. And Gazo is the second biggest of the Maltese archipelago, the three islands, right after Malta itself. It is said to be one of the most beautiful and natural places in Malta, and the island is trying to become an eco-island by 2020, that's two years from now. It's right on track, there is no flights, no railway, none of that on the island. You only have buses, cars and scooters, but a lot of people also cycle. And the island has a lot of wildlife, a lot of nature and crystal clear waters. There are said to be the best waters to dive in in the whole of Europe. I'm really looking forward to exploring this island, so come along with me. And yeah, let's talk about the ferry. Um, I took a bus from Mostad to the ferry port. It was a 1 year and 50 bus. And all buses in Malta are 1 year and 50 cent per journey. Really nice, really standard price. And the ferry itself is around 25 minutes long, but you pay 5 euro upon your return to Malta. So, 5 euro for a return journey, really handy. Yeah, let's have a look. So, how big is Gaozo? Well, it has a steady population of 32,000 inhabitants, which is very small. It's one of the smallest islands that is inhabited in Europe. And area-wise, it's 14 kilometers north to south and 7 kilometers west to east. It's very small, super small. stop in Victoria is the Citadella which is a massive I'm not sure it's a massive building right in the center of the island that overlooks everything else admission to the visitor center for students is 350 which is really cheap but I'm probably just going to walk up myself and just go for the views yeah I'm not gonna lie, these alleyways are super aesthetic. I'm just wandering around going to the very top because there was a way around the whole top that I can see every edge of the town and the island of Gozo, I think. Really cool stuff. It is said that people have lived in Gozo for more than 7,000 years, way before any of the artifacts. And it's not certain, but what I do know is that in the year 1551, 1551, the Turks invaded Gozo and these were pirates they were invading and taking people into slavery so a lot of the inhabitants hid in this very citadel and like hoped that they will survive very powerful things the fortress on which I am on the citadel was built in the 17th century fully. Since then it has not really changed. You put a few railings, bins, but the general shape and structure of it is still the same. And now for the most part it serves the purpose of holding a lot of the museums of Gozo. You have a cathedral here and you have a lot of like artifacts and small shops. So that's how they really make their money because entrance to the citadel is completely free. But if you want to go to the museums, it's paid. It's really cheap though, so if you're into history, definitely check that out. This is the view to the south of the island as well as the east. And the water is really short from here, like the sea. Now I'm going to go to the very top and go to the other side of the citadel and see the north of the city as well as more of the west. I'm really enjoying this citadel and the views that it provides. I'm telling you, if you ever go to Gozo, just go here. It's in the main city, Victoria, free entry, and you get amazing views. And one more thing, 
there is free Wi-Fi. What else can he ask for? <laughs> So right now, after this citadel, I'm probably going to go to Victoria, explore the, seats, explore the streets a little, see what they have to offer, see what their life is, pick up some fruit and veg, and hit up a beach. I'm thinking about Xlandi, which is on the west coast, or the other one, Ramla Bay, which is the most popular one on the east coast, but I'm not sure which one yet. Yeah. Keep with me. And make sure to subscribe and like this video as well as check out my Instagram at Sylvester underscore productions. I'll leave a link below. This north side of Citadel is way more of a vantage point. You see that? Those churches, that those buildings, that's the sea right there. If you go through here, main road, Victoria, that's the sea again. Gozo is absolutely tiny, it's so small. I kind of made it to a museum. It's right beside the Basilica, which is near the square, right across from Citadel. And it's a free exhibition today, and you have a lot of like Maldives artifacts. Really nice stuff. You might remember my Samana Santa video. Well, they do this in Malta as well, but it's a tiny bit different with different procession, different floats. But this is a little model demonstration of what to expect. It's pretty beautiful. All of these small, all of these small streets and highways are absolutely beautiful. You can't really go wrong in this town. And there are so many galleries, like, I've really stumbled into three, I've went to one, which is a museum. Really happy about that. Oh, look, another gallery. I figured I should say it, because it probably is not just me, there's other people around. Well, I'm pretty much walking and taking buses everywhere, so I'm walking a lot. Like yesterday, I walked nearly 15 kilometers. And I'm not having to eat, which is a bit weird, like yesterday, my first meal of the day was at 5.30 p.m., really late. And what about today? Well, today is a bit different. You see, it's turning 12 now. But I've been open about since 6.30. So we're talking about like five and a half hours, and I'm nearly at home, but I have a lot of food by now. Like a big lunch. But yeah, that's very really nice. And these streets are, ooh, ooh, are pretty cool. The next bus is in a few minutes and it's the 306 bus, 11.58. Rather than returning to Malta straight away from Gozo, I decided to take the Camino Ferry, which is towards the Blue Lagoon at 1pm. Really happy about that decision. And it's apparently really busy, but I don't really mind. And why do I kind of leave Gozo that early? Well. I went to Victoria, which is the main city, and that was great. But I see I'm a solo traveler. I don't really eat at this time. So while a lot of the people that came on the ferry were in pubs, bars, bistros, just eating, having tea, coffee, even beers, I just kind of walked around and explored the city most of it. And then I could have went to the beach like Ramla, which is really popular and really great. But I thought, oh, sure, I'll just go to Camino, which is not really far from here, and go to that beach <laughs> instead. So yeah, I'm here again with Tana on the boat right now. It'll be fun.
so blue in my first impressions it's absolutely gorgeous it's beautiful it's pretty big but the, there is no sun decks so like you gotta sit on rocks or sand or or just stone it's not too bad though like if you find a nice place it's really warm and it's gorgeous and the water is meant to be super warm I'm probably gonna take a dip in a bit but till then yeah So let me talk a bit about Camino and how it looks. Well, as you can see, that's Gozon. I came from there, right around here. We got stopped off there at the dock and you have a lot of cafes and shops and fast food along here. It's reasonably, reasonably priced, like a burger is five euro, chips two euro is what you find in Ireland normally. Then, along the waters, you see those uh, buoyant things. That's the line where the ships can enter and you can swim freely. So it's from there to around there. Super nice. That's one of the islands I can swim to, or you can get like a little small boat to. I didn't go there because, well, I wasn't bothered. And right there, you can see people lying and basically like that all the way around that side people lying on the ground on rocks and on the soil it's very uncomfortable but if you're wanting to get tan it's fine it's basically this surface and you just lie on it with a towel or without a towel doesn't matter So a few impressions on the Blue Lagoon and that itself. Let's talk about it. I like it, it's lovely, but it'd be fun if you're with a group and like you're on a party boat. Because I'm by myself and, well, I don't have people to party with. <laughs> so that's the thing. But apart from that, it's lovely. Like I talked to a few people beside me, they're nice. And I went to the pool and like, yeah, you just messing around with random people. That's fine, but. If you're coming here, try and bring a really fun group. I'm not gonna lie, people are so chill here and it might be because of summer, but I think it's just because there are like Maltese. Because I left all my stuff, like my bag, my camera, my phone, my towel, etc. Just on the floor and I went for a swim. The water was a bit chilly, but it was really nice, refreshing. And yeah, everything was still there after like 20 minutes, which is fine. And there's people everywhere, left, right, everywhere. So yeah, Camino is pretty safe. My adventure in Gozo and Camino has come to the end. It's been a great day. I'm going to make my way back to the main island of Malta. And then go back to probably Athard or Masta. I'm not too sure. After I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen today or tomorrow. But stay updated, I'm definitely going to Valletta or Mersuscala, which is in the south. So yeah, come back tomorrow.